The definition of fit is one of the most important things we can understand if we're going to sew clothes. Stick with me and it will become simple on Fit to Stitch. Fit to Stitch has been made possible in part by Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years with innovations in sewing, embroidery, and quilting. Learn more at HusqvarnaViking.com. Nanette Lepore Accessories, contemporary American fashion. NanetteLepore.com. Elliot Berman Textiles, manufacturer of fashion fabrics. ElliotBermanTextiles.com Today I get to talk about my very favorite subject. And my, coincidentally, my very favorite subject is not somehow all of yours favorite subject, but my favorite subject to talk about is fit. F-I-T, fit. But we're going to, before we even talk about that, we're just gonna go ahead and list some pattern problems. My name is Peggy Sagers, and I have taught all over the country. I've gotten emails from all over the world. So from empirical knowledge, we're gonna talk about fit and how to solve it. But I've listed those fitting problems that are your very worst. So let's just take a minute and go over them. Armhole gaps, ugh, we hate them. Large bust, the top gaps at the front. Sway back, I'm short. I'm too tall, <laughs> never the happy medium. Large rear end, protruding tummy, I cannot seem to move. The skirt rides up on me, what can I do to avoid it? I have those horrible sloping shoulders. Old age, my bust has dropped, what do I do about it? Um, there's a good joke about that, but we'll skip that. The shoulders on the garments are just way too wide for me. The neckline gaps, I have a small waist, I have a large waist. We hear it both. And then that sleeve just simply twists on me. When I was in college a long time ago, a professor said to me that we can never resolve a problem if we don't define it. So the first thing we're gonna do as we try to resolve fitting issues is we're going to define fit. And we're gonna define fit with three simple words. And the definition of fit is when the length, circumference, and depth of our body matches the pattern. Or we could say when the length, circumference, and depth of our pattern matches our body because our body is fixed and it's not going to change. It's our responsibility to make sure the pattern goes with our body. So we're going to take each one of these, length, circumference, and depth, and we're going to make sure we understand them, and then we're going to make sure we know how to apply them to our pattern. So let's look at length first. Length is a concept that only goes up or down. And it's really, if we make it a comparison, it's kind of like an elevator. It just can go up or down. Nothing can go sidewards. And if I make it up or down, if I do it to the front, I've got to do it to the back. Both lengths have to go together. I've got three lengths to my body. Those are the base of the neck to the bust, the bust to waist, and waist to hip. So those are the only three lengths that I need to align between the pattern and the body itself. Not all of our garments have lengths. If we take a look at our mannequins, we see that our purple outfit has a waist shape, has a waist. And because if we were making this garment, we'd need to make sure that the waist of this garment matched our waist. If we look at this shirt, a little t-shirt here, we see that there really are no lengths to this garment. This garment doesn't care where our butt, bust hits. It doesn't care where our waist hits. As long as it goes around, that garment works for us. And if we look at our stripe, same thing. There are no lengths to that garment. It simply goes over our body and it doesn't have to align anywhere between the bust, 
the waist, or the hip. So when we're talking about lengths, what we're really talking about is those three lengths of our pattern comparing to those three lengths of our body. Then circumference is a really interesting concept. Because of all of our clothing, we simply pick all of our clothing out by our circumference. Circumference is how our garment is sized. Interestingly enough, in the United States, our circumference is not is kind of made up, and every designer has a right to make up the circumference and name it whatever they want. Circumference is what we need to go all the way around our body. So I want to talk about circumference for just a little bit, because as sewers, the best thing that we can know is our finished garment circumferences. Most time, if we look on the back of a pattern, we look on the back and that has our actual body measurements. And our body measurements really are not the most important thing that we need. What's really the most important thing is if we know what we actually like our garments to measure. So if I was going to make a blouse, it would make sense that I took a blouse, measured the full bust circumference, and then I could really understand what I like in terms of finished garment measurements. So all of these years where we've measured our bust and measured our waist and measured our hip and gone through all of those things to make sure we like what we have, it really would be to our advantage if we measured the skirt finished at the hip line what we like. That would have our ease built in. If we measured our waist what we liked of the actual garment, and then if we measured our bust of what we liked of the actual garment, not our body. So circumference really is the amount around we have. It's how we pick out our pattern or how we pick out our garment. And what we really should have is a list of what we like finished. And if we just simply make a list of what we like in our blouses and our jackets, it's just a really simple thing to do. In both cases of length and circumference, and circumference is always going to go around the body, both of those lines are parallel. Both they're parallel horizontally in length, and they're parallel vertically when we deal with circumference. And you know what? Every time we leave length and we leave circumference, sometimes depth takes us into a big, deep, dark hole. So we're going to just really make it simple here, because all depth is is an angular fix to either length or circumference. So depth is always going to be angular. Depth is a dart. Depth is, instead of having parallel lines, there's only really two types of lines in the universe, those that are parallel and those are converging. So if we want a garment to fit, we have to make sure that we blend together those parallel lines and those converging lines. So we're going to see in lots of different cases where depth is the ability to change the length or to change the circumference in one place but not all the way across. Remember I said that length had to go all the way front to back. Circumference has to go all the way up and down because the whole thing changes at one time. But if we want to change one portion without changing another, that will give us the depth. And again, depth affects length and depth affects circumference. All right, so let's give you a little test. Let's see how good you did. We're going to take these down. And what we're going to do is we're going to put them here now where we can be reminded of them. Now, if you notice when we talk about the LCD, length circumference, it really helps us remember, because it just so happens, it does remind us of LCD. So that's the good news. How easy is that to remember? Like a little LCD readout? This time it's going to be LCD, length circumference depth. All right, so let's go back to our fitting problems. Remember, we can't define, we can't solve a problem unless we define it. So let's solve each of these problems. And what we're going to do in our very best guesstimate, we're going to try to figure out what each of these are. And our only answers, there's only three answers. That's the good news. In all of our fitting problems, it's amazing that there's only three answers. And you're going to see that's really true. OK, so let's go to armhole gaps first. So the test really is, and if you always go in that order of L, C, or D, armhole gap. So let's just say if my armhole gapped, if I took, made the whole thing shorter or the whole thing longer, would it solve the gap? You know what? No. So if, if I added more circumference, would it solve that armhole gap? Mm, no. And so therefore, it's going to be D. Now, even if we don't know how to fix it right now, we're still going to answer that it's D just until we get to the garments, and then we'll solve those issues. The large bust, it gaps at the front. Why would it gap at the very front? That is circumference. 
So I'm giving you little hints. All right, sway back. That means by definition that the center back of the garment is shorter at center back than it is at the side. So we know if we took the whole thing and made it shorter, that wouldn't work. We know if we took the circumference in at the side, that wouldn't work. And so we know this is gonna be depth. Now here's the good news on all of this. You can try it and, and you can not even believe what I'm telling you, but you can go through and take a situation like that's an armhole gap and you can try length and see if that fixes it and try circumference. But the good news is you only have three issues, so it can't take you 40 years to kind of solve these problems. The good news is we should be able to get them taken care of in just a little bit. I'm shorter, I'm tall. That is, bam, good job, length. That is a length issue. Large rear end, that's circumference. Protruding tummy, circumference. Cannot move, circumference. All right, the skirt rides up. The skirt only rides up because the skirt is looking for a place that it can relax. And if it's too small, it will go up. So that's, that skirt riding up is circumference as well. Sloping shoulders. Remember, a sloping shoulder couldn't possibly be a parallel. So whenever we look at a converging line, that's going to be a dart. That's going to be a depth issue. So that right here is a depth issue. The bust has dropped. The good news is the bust only goes up or down. So if you're young, it's up, and if you're older, it's down, and the, that becomes a length issue. Shoulders on the garments are too wide. You know, believe it or not, that's really a style issue. It's really not any one of these. We could call it a circumference issue because a lot of times it happens because our garments are simply too big around. So we're gonna call that a circumference issue. The neckline gaps, any, most of the time that we see gaps, those gaps are angular fixes with the exception of this circumference gap. So we're gonna call that a depth. The small waist to the large waist, we're gonna call that circumference. And then the sleeve twisting, we're gonna call that depth. All right, so now what we wanna do is go through each of them and make sure you understand why each of them is the one I labeled. See, here in the TV world, you didn't even get a vote. You just got to be told what I thought the answer was. So let's go over to our mannequins and let's look at armhole gaps for a minute because we can especially see our striped T-shirt. And there's only two reasons that those armholes gap. There's only two reasons those armholes gap. So the first reason is that the shoulder angle is wrong, which is a dart. And the second reason is that because I have no dart. So either way, you see there's too much fabric on the side of the garment while the center is just perfect. So if I go ahead and pin in a dart, I can get, and, and all that dart is doing, if you notice, is simply taking away length at the side of the garment without taking away any darts in the middle, or at any length in the middle. So I can have one length here and another length here, and that uneven length is called depth. That's exactly what depth is. If I pick up the shoulder angle, you can see that that dart goes away, that that gap goes away and lays just fine. Sometimes it's not an armhole gap that we see, but it's actually angular wrinkles here. And those angular wrinkles are the same problem in that I really just don't have a dart that is there or the dart that I have is not large enough. So I wanna go ahead and pull that up but also pay attention to the shoulder because if that shoulder angle is wrong, I get gapping in through there. A large busted garment that gaps at the front, I just need a larger circumference, but I hear so many of you saying to me, well, I'm afraid to go to a larger circumference because I'm afraid the shoulders will be too wide. So let's just pretend here for a minute that I've gone to this bigger size, but, and my armhole really needs to start right here. That's where I really want it to be. Even though the size that I now have goes around my circumference, I'm good. I really want this to start, the shoulder seam to start there. I can take the armhole, I'm using the back, but you could take the front armhole and just place it here and put that point there, put this point at the side seam, and I could just redraw that new armhole. So it wouldn't change my original armhole size at all, it would simply change the beginning point, but still keep it exactly the same. It would just change the angle a little bit, and that's perfectly fine when I do that armhole. My sway back, my sway back, is so I'm just gonna have a little bit of wrinkle in the back, and I'm actually gonna turn this little mannequin around right here, and you'll see that she has, sure enough, a sway back. You'll see that there's just these 
ridges of wrinkles right in here, but you notice they're not here. So definition of anything that needs to be changed in one place and not another, that's what depth is. It's an angular fix. If I took away length, it wouldn't change it. I would still have that bag. If I took away circumference, that wouldn't fix it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take out more length here. And what I wanna do with this particular dart, because I don't want it in my finished product, I'm simply gonna take it all the way to the side and I can actually end right on the seam line. And when I end on the seam line, I don't even have to have it in the finished garment. I don't have to have a seam. I don't have to have any of that. I can take away here. I can taper to nothing at the side seam, and I'm good to go. So that's a perfect example of sway back and how to fix it. Why is it a dart? Simply because it's solved by taking away more in one place and less in another. If I look here, if I'm short or too tall, well, you all know that you've just got to add or take away. And the whole reason I started sewing is because in third grade, being 5'8 was really not cool. So nothing was long enough and nothing worked. And so I just had to add a lot of length to everything I wore. If you look at these, one length is from base of the neck to bust. So you're going to add right in through here. This is what's called a free zone. You can notice that I could add as much length or take away length as I wanted to to get the bust and the shoulder base in the right place. Then I can take away between the bust and the waist, and I would come in through here. And then when I take away between the waist and the hip, I can come in through there. And no matter how short or how tall you are, learning and understanding that all these can do is go up or down can really get you to fit any single garment. And then once you do it, be sure that you're utilizing those lengths over and over as you're comparing them to other tissue. Uh, large buttocks, we just need a bigger circumference. And you know what, sometimes in that bigger circumference, we need to make our darts a little bit larger and the sides seem a little bit straighter as we learned on skirts, so that all of that difference between the hip and the waist is not simply at the side seam. So we can bring this out, we can increase the darts to get all of that in balance, that would be my circumference. Protruding tummy, so many of you just really struggle with that. And one thing I want you to really learn on that, because it is a circumference issue, is how to use the French curve on that side seam. You notice if I put the French curve like that, I, and a lot of times when I measure for a skirt, I only take into account the circumference of the hip and the circumference of the waist. I don't really take into account the difference between the two. But if you notice if I pull this French curve down, I really get more circumference, even though I haven't changed the waist, even though I haven't changed the hip circumference, I get much more circumference right in here through the tummy, and I add more circumference. And that's the best and easiest way to really fix that protruding tummy. If I cannot move that circumference, just go into a larger size. If I need to fix the shoulders, I can use this here. The skirt rides up, more circumference is needed. We have in Texas what we call butt spray. Sprung. And butt sprung is when I can take the skirt off the person, I can hang it on the hanger and still see the shape of the body. That means the skirt's too small and I need a little more circumference. Sloping shoulders, we showed exactly that because I can take the angle of this and do exactly and, and exactly mimic what my body is doing. If this angle is not right, a lot of this extra fabric will hang down and it will make some gapping there at the side. Whereas if I pick this up, that extra fabric will go away. So I really want to make sure that that shoulder angle matches. And if I have taken the shoulder angle, and the pattern change that I would do would look just like this on my pattern. Let's just say I'm going to take this down a half an inch. And I'm going to mark that a half an inch. All I do then is I pick up that point and take my sleeve to that point and draw on my new sleeve. So draw on my new armhole. I don't have to change my sleeve at all. I merely have to drop the armhole down and make this new point my start and the side will stop somewhere right in through there. So very easy to change. A lot of people think when we change the armhole, we change the sleeve and we don't have to. We can change the um, shoulder seam. We can restore the armhole right back to where it was and we don't have to do anything to the sleeve. Our old age bust drop, that's a good old length and line. And all we got to do is cut there and we can add as much length as we need to. Shoulders on the garments are too wide. We learned how to do that. I can simply pick that up, 
start my armhole here and continue it where I want it to be. Don't have to change the sleeve at all. Small waist, large waist, use my darts. The whole purpose of darts is because my body goes in from my hip to my waist in small increments all the way around the body, I don't want to use this. I don't want to use it all at the side seam. I want to take it in little increments all the way around my body. So remember to use those darts and we don't want to eliminate them. I know, you know, they take an extra five seconds to stitch, but we really don't want to eliminate them because our garments will look so much nicer if we leave them in. Our twisted sleeve is simply a matter of depth. And the depth is because that sleeve changes and it actually has a dart built in at that at the elbow. So if it's twisting, it needs to be a little shorter and that dart probably needs to be a little larger on the inseam so that the sleeve fits the shape of our arm just perfect. L C D. I'm going to show you a little tip that I learned some time ago in sewing. And years ago, manufacturers used to underline and they underlined and underlined so that the, well, there were several reasons they actually underlined. Let's talk about each of those. There's really three main reasons. And today we've really added in a fourth reason. The first reason we did, and I've got kind of samples of each one of these. The first reason was that if we had a fabric that was very loosely woven and we wanted to make a garment, but we were a little nervous that, that it would just not hold up to the garment that we would make, we would fuse it and then it would give it a little more stability. And actually they didn't fuse it, they underlined it. But today our fusibles are really contemporary underlinings. So instead of using two layers of fabric, we're actually just fusing on our, our two layers together. It's much easier to handle, it's much easier to work with. But again, we're looking for three main reasons as to why we're going to underline. First is that something's loosely woven. And that, in this case, was the same here. You can see in this piece, it's just really light. And maybe I want to make something that needs a little bit more structure. And you can't even tell it. And the reason why is because we're using a fusible that is a knit. And you always do want to use a fusible that's a knit because, because it's knitted, we simply will not have a weft and a warp. And when we fuse a weft and a warp together and a weft and a warp of the fabric, we really lose drape. So the beauty of using the knit is simply that I'll never, use, I'll never lose the drape of my fabric. In this particular case, this is a really lightweight silk. And the reason I fused it, it was to add body. The silk was simply so lightweight, it had no drape to it at all. So I fused that for that reason. And in this particular case, it was I just wanted to change the hand so, and retard wrinkling. So our three reasons are to stabilize, to add body, and to simply retard wrinkling in a fabric that, that highly wrinkles. The fourth reason that's been added in is if you look at this fabric, you can really see through it. It's a very lightweight, very sheer silk, but I wanted to make a jacket out of it. So if you look on the inside of this jacket, it's completely fused with a fusible interfacing. And the reason for doing that was to give it some additional body that it just wouldn't have had. So when I fuse, I just want to lay it down. I'm going to cut out the same shape as my fa fashion fabric. What I do is I actually cut it all out at the same time. So it's so much easier to do it then. And then you just take your iron and give it a lot of steam. You really want a lot of steam because the steam is really the key. It's, it's not really the heat and it doesn't need a lot, but that steam will really adhere it and adhere it nicely. So very simple to do, very easy to do. And when you fuse, you really want to fuse all your fashion fabric pieces. The jacket I have on, it's actually a knit, but because I wanted to make a jacket out of it, I fused all the inside pieces. So everything's fused, the sleeve, top to bottom, the back, the front, everything. And then it really acts as a woven, even though it's a knit. So fusing is a great little trick that we really want to know about, and it really gives us a lot more versatility with our fabrics and to what we can do with the end result. Walk back with me because I want to talk a little bit as we've discovered fit, and we've really discovered length, circumference, and depth. What I want us to all understand, especially in this day and age, is how important it is to embrace our shapes. 
I think so many times as we gain weight and as we feel uncomfortable with our bodies, we have a tendency to just want to cover, cover. And as we saw earlier, we kind of get into that whole pillowcase scenario and it's really not our best look, even though we feel mentally that we're covered and it's kind of where mentally we're comfortable, it's not the best way that we wanna look. We wanna give our body some shape, we want to make sure it has lengths. We want to pull in some darts at the bus so that we really do look the smallest we can. And actually when we bypass fit, when we don't include our length, circumference, and depth is really when we start to look actually larger than we are. I made the analogy earlier about Dolly Parton in a Moo Moo. And if we just don't use those differences of darts, then we really start to look the size of our bust all the way down. And that's just not a positive of what we want to do. So embrace our shape, understand length, circumference, and depth, and just perfectly it will work for you and absolutely make you look your best. Join us next time here to learn all about the French curve and how to use it in your sewing on Fit to Stitch. Visit fittostitch.com for all of the patterns and instructions found on today's show, plus more tutorials, webcasts, and techniques from this season of Fit to Stitch. This is show 104. If you enjoyed today's show and want to learn more about fitting with Peggy Sagers, a DVD set of all 13 episodes of Fit to Stitch season 100 is available at fittostitch.com for $49.99 plus shipping. Fit to Stitch has been made possible in part by Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years with innovations in sewing, embroidery, and quilting. Learn more at HusqvarnaViking.com. Nanette Lepore Accessories, contemporary American fashion. NanetteLepore.com. Elliot Berman Textiles, Manufacturer of Fashion Fabrics, ElliottBermanTextiles.com.